What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. Now, some of you will have seen that I've done a few videos on my ALR1 algae reactor. And in those videos, I've told you how fantastic it is, but guess what, I've sold it. And I've gone back to a standard refugium. But there are very good reasons for that. So I wanted to make this video to talk you through my rationale. So what I'm gonna tell you is why I grow Cheeto in the first place and what I hope to get out of it, why I went over to an algae reactor from a refugium, and then I'm gonna tell you why I ditch the algae reactor, and I'm gonna summarize by telling you what I think the advantages of an algae reactor are and the advantages of a refugium. Let's check it out. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there are three primary reasons for growing Cheeto. First and foremost, to control nitrate and phosphate. Number two, to provide a place for microfauna like copepods and amphipods to live. And number three, to stabilize pH so it doesn't dip overnight. So why did I go for an algae reactor then? Well, when I first got the ALR1, I had a 120 litre nano tank. I wanted to grow Cheeto, but there wasn't much space in the sump. The back cabinet was wide open, so I'd have got mega light spill into my living room. And I liked the idea of containing Cheeto to stop it from escaping. Now, it did a great job at almost all of those things. My nitrates were always between one and five parts per million although my phosphates did go as high as 0.14, which was way too high for my liking. But having had it for 15 months, I decided that for me, the benefits of the reactor were outweighed by its deficiencies. Now, there were a couple of minor reasons why I sold it and why I didn't get on with it. Number one, I started to find maintenance more and more of a chore. Algae grows perfectly well if you clean the reactor every couple of months, but to get the best from it, you should probably clean the light stick harvest some Cheeto and unblock the strainer regularly, maybe every week or every fortnight. That will keep flow and light at optimum levels, and I just found I didn't do that often enough. Number two, selling it freed up a bit of cash that I used to buy a battery backup for my return pump, and I think value for money is an issue with algae reactors. They're likely to cost you a few hundred pounds regardless of what brand you buy, and you can set up a refugium for a fraction of that price. And when you look at where else you can spend that money, a better skimmer, a filter roller, or perhaps more importantly, new fish and corals, you wonder if an algae reactor is a better investment. And for me, spending money on a reef tank is always about priorities. But those were the small reasons. Really, there were two main reasons I decided to sell, performance and microfauna. Now I think Cheeto has a better chance of controlling phosphates in particular when there's a lot more of it. The Cheeto section of my sump is much bigger than my algae reactor, so I'm expecting to get much better growth from a refugium and therefore better nutrient control. The algae section of my Peninsula 500 V3 sump holds around 25 litres of water. The ALR1 only holds 4.5 litres, and that's about 1% of total system volume. Now, I could have just upgraded to the ALR2 or the ALR3, they hold 12.7 litres and 19 litres respectively, so the ALR3 would have been almost as big as my sump. But the trouble with them is that they're pretty big. The ALR3 has a footprint of a foot, and the ALR2 is not far off as big. They're also both two feet tall, which means they will be four feet tall when you put the algae basket out, and that's just not gonna fit in my sump. They're also quite expensive at three and 400 pounds respectively, and at that point, value for money, as far as I'm concerned, starts to reduce quite significantly. In my nano tank, I found the ALR1 grew Cheeto nicely, and it would fill up every month or two. But that growth dropped off completely when I moved it to my Peninsula 500. After displacement, that tank holds around 400 litres of water. My skimmer is rated to 2,000 litres, so it's possible the reactor was being outcompeted. I experimented with flow between one and 3,000 litres per hour, but I didn't see any difference in growth. Whatever it was, I came to the conclusion that, in the same way as skimmers, if an algae reactor says it's rated for tanks up to 500 litres, it's probably suitable for a tank half that size. And in the 15 months I had the algae reactor, I didn't see any copepods or amphipods in it at all. I've spoken to algae reactor users who've had some luck in that regard, but I've yet to find anyone who thinks an algae reactor is a good place to grow copepods. When I've had refugiums in the past, they have been crawling with life, so much so that it's actually cool to watch in your sump. 
And for me, copepods and amphipods are an important part of establishing a successful and mature reef tank. And a thriving refugium significantly increases your chances of being able to keep fish like mandarins or scooter blennies, which is a nice little bonus. So what about the pros and cons of each system then? Well, let's start with an algae reactor. Number one, the algae reactor contains the Cheeto so it stops strands from escaping. There's a little strainer on the top which does a really good job and keeps everything in the reactor. Now I've only had my refugium set up for two weeks and I'm already seeing small bits of Cheeto making a dash for freedom. It's not causing problems at the moment but I'm sure I'll be unblocking my skimmer at some point in the future. A reactor also reduces light spill both into your living room and into your sump. Now, the light spill into your living room might just annoy your better half a little bit, but spill into your sump can cause algae to grow in places you don't want it to. Now, I don't know if that really causes any harm, but it certainly looks unsightly. And algae reactors have a small footprint because they use vertical space, which frees up room in your sump. And because of that, it will increase your system water volume, which is particularly handy if you've got a nano tank. And finally, if you have a cabinet, you can dry plummet away from the sump to free up yet more space. So what about the advantages of a refugium then? Well, a properly set up refugium with strong light and good flow will grow Cheeto just as well, maybe even a little bit better than an algae reactor. It will also be significantly cheaper. My CFL lamp costs 35 pounds from eBay, so you will save yourself literally hundreds of pounds against an algae reactor. Plus, the algae section of your sump will probably be significantly larger than your algae reactor. And that means you'll be able to grow more Cheeto, which will probably have a better impact on controlling nitrates and phosphates. You'll also save on maintenance because you won't have to pull a reactor out of your sump, drip water all over the floor, and clean it in the sink every couple of weeks. Although it wouldn't hurt to give you something the once over every now and then, of course. And finally, the other big benefit you have a place for copepods and amphipods to thrive and that will have a positive impact on your reef and will let you keep mandarins. Now I can't comment on all algae reactors of course, I've only ever used the ALR1. Some might be more efficient at pushing flow through, others might have better reflection so it contains more light, but I would say that the chances are if you buy a unit that's the same sort of size for the same sort of price, it's probably going to be fairly similar. But if you've got different experiences with algae reactors, stick it in the comment section below and let everybody know. So that's it then. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. And until next time, I have been The Reef Dog. Thank you, good night.